Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. So one of the things that you may not recognize is that while trying to do recording on a technical channel, you always end up with technical faux pas, ironically. You may look at the end product and see something that looks really polished, but I've got to tell you that when I started doing this video a couple of days ago, I had all of this screen tearing going on that you can see right here, all these lines popping up on the screen. And so I searched around for a long time and somehow arbitrarily on my NVIDIA video card settings, this allow flipping got turned on and you can see all of that screen noise. If I turn off this allow flipping, uh, it immediately turns off that problem and I can go ahead and quit the video driver settings and we're back going again. But you have no idea how many times I actually modified my configuration settings for my machine, changed video drivers and everything under the sun. And of course it took hours and hours. Now that screen tearing that you saw, interestingly, it only showed up when I was actually doing a recording in OBS Studio. Aside from that, it never showed its ugly head at any time during my recordings. So today what I wanted to talk about was the Unify Enterprise 8 PoE switch and an issue that I ran into with heat on that particular switch and really this is more a commentary on all Ubiquity Unify switches and their decisions about their settings in regards to their fans and cooling. So the Enterprise 8 PoE switch, it's really nice workgroup switch that's really designed with eight 2.5 gigabit RJ45s and then it has two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. And so this makes a really nice work group switch that you would think you would put in a small office area and host a few users on to get a better 2.5 gig um, experience. So this is a layer three switch and it has 80 gigabits uh, of switching cap capacity and 40 gigabits of non-blocking throughput which is really a pretty good performer in the grand scheme of things. And it's a really nice device, as I'd already said. And it offers up to 120 watts of maximum PoE power with a maximum of 32 watts per port. So it's really a pretty decent performer as far as most of the switches in the Unify line, most of the small switches, certainly. And it's housed in a polycarbonate case and has an operating temperature, they say, where the environment should be anywhere between minus five to 45 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of interesting, and that's really what we're gonna focus on today and take a look at more closely. So this switch also has a 1.3 inch color backlit LCM display, and they featured that touch display on a majority of their new switches, as you may be aware if you use unified devices. So what about the fan speed defaults? Well, you, you want to SSH into your switch to take a look at those. And in order to set your credentials to log on to the switch, you're going to go into your unified controller program and go to the settings option, go to system, go to advanced and then look for a section labeled device authorization. When you get there, you can set up a username and you can set up a password. And also I suppose instead of the password, you could set up SSH keys. So once you've enabled um, external uh, device authentication, then you'll be able to SSH using these credentials into your particular switch. So after SSHing into this Enterprise uh, 8 switch, uh, I did the command SWCTRL, in other words, switch control, and then ENV show, and it lists out um, this information you're seeing on the screen. 
Now I haven't really figured this out. It looks like the switch theoretically has two temperature sensors, but I don't really think that's right. I think this is two temperature sensor readings over a period of time. In any event, <clears throat> um, here after some modifications I made, which are kind of humorous actually, I was getting 53 to 55 degrees Celsius on the switch. And it says the max temperature is 69 to 72 degrees Celsius, which I saw before I uh, performed my so-called modifications, which again, uh, you'll see what I did. And then it says the alert temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So I, I can't help but feeling that that's just a little bit crazy because 100 degrees um, Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the same temperature required to boil water. So stick with that fact because we're going to come back to that. Anyway, as part of this, it says fan duty cycle or fan duty level is zero. And I found out by digging into some of the documentation out there that they have fan levels from zero to four. And four would be the highest level and zero effectively means off. And then for whatever reason, it says fan one is the one fan in here, and it says it has a speed of 82 and 82 RPMs. But in reality, the fan's not spinning at all because the duty, the duty level is set to zero at this particular point in time. All right, so theoretically you can change the fan level. So again, we're SSH'd into the switch and there's a command called switch control, SWCTRL, fan set level one. So I said levels one through four, so you could set level one. All except for the fact that you get this um, error back and it won't do that. And you can do that um, no matter what level, level one through four. So in looking online in the um, <clears throat> Ubiquity Unify community forum, a lot of people reported that this command stopped working around five years ago uh, in a firmware upgrade that Unify made. And it appears that their fan levels can now only be controlled automatically by their discretion per their firmware settings and they're not user modifiable. So <clears throat> the other thing you have is, as I mentioned earlier, you have the touch panel. And so here you see the touch panel that I've got on the switch. And it's really interesting. You can swipe over to this fan setting control and you can actually drag this slider. I was gonna do it for the video, but it's pretty precarious and I kind of fat fingered it, but you can drag it over and you can hear that fan inside the case really rev up full force. And I mean, you can set it all the way up to max, but the second you take your finger off of it, since it's in auto mode, it goes all the way back to zero and turns itself completely off. So that's interesting because when I first started looking at this, my switch was running at 67 degrees Celsius. And I thought that was a bit hard or a bit high. And that's what I um, <clears throat> wanted to see if I could correct because I thought it was a bit hard on the hardware. All right, so moving along, you also have the network controller settings. So if you go into the switch and you look at your network controller settings, in this particular case, I was already cooling the device somewhat, if you will. And then the temperature here is 57 uh, degrees Celsius, and that's not so bad. So one would think that you could go over to the settings in the controller. And so I went to the settings screen. And as you can see here, there are no settings that are related to uh, setting the fan to perhaps help with the temperatures. So um, what I did was I installed a, what's called the optional cooling module. And this is the op optional cooling module. It's a USB fan. I might point out that before you touch or before you put any air over the top of this thing, 
if you touch the top of it, it is quite warm to the touch. Um, as a matter of fact, it's at the point where I think most people would be concerned about how hot it would be. And um, it would be fine if I put it back in my computer room where I have an air conditioner that cools things down to really cold. But this switch is really designed for an office area. In fact, what you're seeing here is I have one of my SFPs connected and I have a 10 gig link back to my computer room. So I've got wiring through my wall and it's going back over there. And so I have uh, right now three devices connected to this particular switch. And these ridges in the top um, are actually vents. And when you turn the fan up really high uh, with that auto command, uh, if, as long as you hold on it, if you take your other hand and touch the top, you can feel the air blowing out of here pretty well. So because of the fact that we can't um, switch it off auto in fan level zero, until the device reaches 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And my thought is the reason it may reach 212 degrees Fahrenheit before it turns on is um, <clears throat> this might be designed to put a coffee cup on and to keep your coffee hot. Um, although I would question that because I would think 212 degrees might boil your coffee and so it might be too warm. In any event, when I put this fan on, this little USB fan, uh, I can turn it on low, medium, or high. Right now it's on medium. I typically turn it on high because if the ambient temperature of the room is, say, 78 degrees Fahrenheit, I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, uh, burn up the switch, so to speak. So <clears throat> over here is the uh, SFP that I have installed. And this SFP, I just have to say, because it's plugged into the switch and the internals of the switch are so hot, um, my advice is, is, is don't touch this SFP with your bare hands. And we're going to get into that. So um, what SFP copper modules am I using there? I decided uh, to use copper modules instead of fiber modules. Um, and that's because my uh, cable run... And uh, I have cats, and I thought that cats were more copper friendly than they were fiber friendly. So um, I actually use two kinds of SFPs on my Unify switches, and this is the Ytech 10 gig SFP I got on Amazon. And then I also use the 10G Tech SFP which I also got on Amazon. So I used both of these devices and both of these devices plugged into that um, eight port enterprise switch get fiery hot. Now, interestingly, when I had these same devices in my computer room in say my Pro 24 switch, I'm not seeing that level of heat over there. And it's mainly because of the fact that the enterprise 24 switch does have a default fan speed that is greater than zero, even running in a very cold computer room environment. Okay, so um, kind of to summarize here, is this thing really a work group switch if you're gonna run it out in the office area? And I say, yes, it is. You just need to purchase one of the user supplemental active cooling devices that you see pictured here. You also need to acquire a oven mitt and put a label on the side saying caution SFP use oven mitt and that would make sense today in this or er, in this time of uh, caution labels and I think that Unify or Ubiquity should uh, clearly label the switch caution SFP use oven mitt before uh, removal. And then secondly, um, I've come to the conclusion that these uh, vent slats in the top of the device are actually to produce uh, grill marks on your meat potentially. Now, in order not to drip fat into this device, I would say that you should probably put some aluminum foil on top of your uh, Enterprise 8 Pro or your Enterprise 8 Switch. And then on top of the aluminum foil, feel free to put your meat, okay? 
And um, I, I think it'll slow cook it. So I think you'll end up with some very desirable results. Um, perhaps uh, it would be best for fillets because you could probably put two or three fillets on, on the top of this device. And they should cook pretty nicely. And plus, while you're doing your computer work, you should be able to get some pretty reasonable um pretty reasonable aromas going. So the long and short of this is, hey, Ubiquity, can we get some manual fan control on this device? I mean, what's the purpose in putting a fan on a switch if the fan's always off and always set to fan level zero? Secondly, hey, can we actually control the fan ourselves? And um, what was your intent on setting your maximum uh, alarm level on this thing to be 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I really think that's a little too warm. What do you all think? Anyway, so it appears that there's no manual override for fan speed on any Unify switches anymore. And so if you had a switch that the fan was running too loud and it was in a user work area, you might want to turn it around, turn it down. In this case, if the fan wasn't running at all and the switch was getting hot, you might want to turn it up. So most Unify switches choose a reasonable fan speed temperature threshold, but this Enterprise 8 switch is certainly not one of them. And the USW Enterprise 8 PoE switch seems to always default to fan speed zero or off. And don't get me wrong, this switch is a fantastic switch in every other sense. It's just that this whole business of the cooling and management of its internal fan seems to be uh, lost to uh, the wind because they really haven't um, done anything to work with it. So since the switch is likely to be deployed in an office area rather than putting this thing in your rack in a climate controlled data center or computer room, the ability to set fan speeds, I would think, would be far more important. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And by the way, do you like the black screen slides better than the white background slides? Let me know in the uh, comment section. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.